Okay, well, um, thank you very much. It's very nice to be here. I'm going to talk about how you can get yourself in the media. There's been enormous changes in the media in the last five years, some of which you can use to get your brand uh, seen. So in 2013, I was, at a, um, I was at an event in New Zealand which is called Pinot Noir 2013. And an invitation to this event is one of the most coveted in the wine world. It's three days of non-stop Pinot Noir entertainment um, done by the New Zealanders, which is always a lot of fun. And they flew in journalists from around the world. They had top journalists from the United States, from the United Kingdom, from continental Europe. They had important journalists from China. And they pretty much put nearly all of New Zealand's Pinot Noir producers in front of the media. There was one day where somebody stood up and she said, you know what, we're all paying so much money for you to be here, and we know that when you go home and we start to see your articles, that you will once again be talking about all the usual suspects. It'll be all the big producers and all the famous ones, and how do little people like us get in the media? And one of the Australian journalists said, well, it's very simple. What you have to do is produce very, very high quality wine because wine critics like us make our reputation on finding unusual and great wines. So that's what you have to do. And she said, but we do make great wines and we still don't appear in the media. But um, she's, she actually made a point, and what I'm going to do today is talk about some of the ways that you can leverage changes in the media to make sure that you bring your, uh, your message. So first of all, um, I work for a German publishing house, and uh, I'm the English language magazine, and I have about 30 correspondents around the world, from China to Russia to continental Europe to the UK and the US. And we pretty much work the same way. There are differences internationally in the media, um, but because we're all being driven digitally, we're all under the same sorts of pressures, and we pretty much work the same way. So if you can craft your message very well for one market, chances are, with some small tweaks, you can do it internationally as well. The real problem, and it is a very serious problem in the wine industry, is that the story that everybody tells is exactly the same. I've lost count of the number of times uh, I've spoken to producers at Provine or Van Expo or Van Italy, and I say, tell me your story. And they say, well, typically we're a family-owned winery, which is great. Our wines are made in the vineyard, which is great. And we make our wines with passion which is terrific. You know, wine should be all of those things. But that's the standard narrative that everybody says. And if everybody's got that story, then it's not going to fly. You've got to say something different. So what's the secret to a good story? Now, there's somebody else today who's speaking about storytelling, so I'll leave the nuts and bolts of how to tell a good story to her. But basically, a good story is the stories that you tell one another. If the hail has come down and hurt your crops. That's a story, and if you send that to the British media, they'll print it. Um, if raccoons come and steal your grapes, or if in South Africa baboons come and rustle your grapes, you can get that story into the media. Um, if, if you have a, a huge success of some kind, you, you can do it, but stay away from the story of um, we're family owned, we make wines in the vineyard, we make wines with passion, not because those are not good things, but because everybody says them. The other important thing is that the wine media, now that it's uh, reliant on digital, has a ferocious need for content, absolutely ferocious. Um, there, are apps, uh, there are apps like Flipboard where people are aggregating news stories all the time and they need lots of news to put into these aggregation. Um, in the English-speaking world, magazines like Drinks Business and Harper's in the UK cannot get enough news stories. So if anything happens that's quirky or cute or different or unusual, Send them a press release. You're almost guaranteed to get um, on their site the next day. So, This is the most important point. If I can leave you with this one thing that you take away. Um, we now live in a completely visual age. You must have good photographs. Magazines no longer have the budgets to go and take photographs in the, in the way that they used to. The other thing that's changed is that content management systems which drive websites only use landscape pictures, they no longer use portrait. So if you supply portrait shots to anybody that has a, a media website, uh, the, the pictures won't be shown because um, when, they, when they're slotted into the system, it'll cut your head off. And uh, a graphic designer has to, be, has to spend time changing the picture. 
So make sure that you've got um, landscape pictures. The more colourful they are, the better, because they will look good when they're printed and they'll also look good when they're transferred to the web. Secondly, make them easy to get hold of. Lots of wineries don't like giving away pictures or making them readily accessible because they're very scared about where, where they'll end up. Um, I know of very few winery photographs that have ever been used for satire or ridicule purposes, whereas I know of many people who didn't make it into a magazine because their, um, their photos simply weren't available. If possible, get lots of colourful, nice shots done and make them downloadable from your website. A company that does this really well is Donna Figata from Sicily. Uh, they also make fantastic wines. And by the way, making good wine is the start of the story. You have to make good wine, obviously. Uh, their wines are excellent, but they have um, lots and lots of photographs of their properties, their people, you name it, downloadable from their website. And they're all colourful. If a magazine editor puts this in their magazine, it will make the magazine look great, and it will make the website look great. So bear that in mind. Okay, the next thing is, when you're targeting media, the wine media might not be the right place for your story. There are lots of other media out there that are also looking for content. And I'll give you an example. Um, I went to a winery in Spain uh, a couple of months ago, and they've been doing sustainability work. And what's happened as an unexpected side effect is that a whole lot of birds have come back. They've attracted lots of owls and eagles and hawks, and, and with the birds have come lots of other animals. Now, that's a really great story that they could easily get into um, a National Geographic style of magazine or a Discovery style of magazine. Will it help you sell more wine if you do that? Maybe, maybe not, but it will get you out there and it will make you look good to be the person who's brought back the horny owl. Secondly, never overlook local media. The smallest newspapers can do you a big favour and the reason is because of, once again, is aggregation. There are lots of people all over the world who are looking for content that they can add to their own websites, that they can add to Flipboard, that they can, they can tweet. Everyone wants to be the first person to find a cute wine story. And so, you know, you can have a very small suburban newspaper now and that story will get picked up internationally. Finally, another way that you can get yourself into the media is by having something to say. Magazines like mine, which are business magazines, occasionally will run columns or op-ed pieces by people who've got, um, you know, really interesting things to say. Um, in our case, it would be somebody who was talking about, you know, um, legal issues in the EU or changes in the market in China. But if you've got something that you feel really passionate about, write a column, send it to your local newspaper or send it to your local wine media outlet and chances are they'll publish it and you can make yourself an authority figure that way. Um, right, the other thing is now when you go overseas, this is really, really important. Once you start going into overseas media, there are big differences in the way people approach things and it's incredibly important that you work with a local agency who understands. This story comes from Wine and Partners in Vienna. Uh, Dorley Muir, who's a very famous PR in Europe, um, was working with a very famous Californian winery who sent through a picture of the founder, but they put a black border around it. Now, in Europe, if you've got a black border around it, it means the person is dead. If they had sent that to media outlets, they would have reported that one of Napa's most important winemakers had died. Um, and it's really important that you don't make mistakes like that. Um, a lot of PR agencies, particularly in Europe, complain that when they have overseas people working with them, um, it's natural that you're biased towards the way you're used to doing things, but they try and bring an American sensibility or a British sensibility or a South African sensibility to working with European media, and there are very different ways of doing things, and you need local expertise. The other thing is, this is a kind of a sensitive point. I get press releases all the time telling me that some wine has got amazing Parker points or Wine Spectator's given it, you know, whatever, or it's won a decanter medal. Be very careful about doing this with the wine media. Nearly all of the major wine magazines in the world now, um, you know, they pride themselves on the quality of the critics that they employ. And uh, a, a huge number of wine media internationally now run their own competitions. So. When you send somebody a, um, when you send, for example, um, Decanter, which has an important wine competition, a story about, uh, you know, a Parker Point, you're actually insulting them, and you're not going to, you're not going to get a run in the magazine on that basis. The only uh, exception to this rule is if your wine has done something absolutely unbelievable. It's upset the apple cart in some way. So, for example, there was a wine uh, from Ningxia in China about 
two or three years ago, which won the best uh, red wine trophy of the world at Decanter, which was such an unexpected result that that's definitely newsworthy. Other than that, be careful about how much you quote other wine critics to rival magazines. Finally, and this is the most important point, understand that there is a difference between people who do PR and people who write for wine media or other media. A PR person's job is to make you look great, to craft your message, to make sure that nothing negative is said about you. A journalist's job is to entertain or inform their readers. Um, do not do what many PR people do or marketing managers do, which is ring up a journalist and instruct them on how they are to craft the message. Don't ask them for sign-off for the magazine um, and, and basically don't dictate how they should deal with the story. Um, if you follow these simple things, most importantly, get photographs done. I cannot emphasise this enough. Photographs, photographs, photographs. Um, and pretty soon you'll be seeing yourself in the media. Thank you very much.